Sweetest Love, I Do Not Go by John Dunn. Before I really go into the poetry, I would like to say a little bit about the poet. John Dunn was born on January 22, 1572 in London, England. He was an English poet, scholar, soldier, lawyer, and a devoted Roman Catholic priest. He is particularly famous for his mastery in metaphysical poems. The metaphysical poets are witty, ingenious, and highly philosophical. They deal with topics on love, life, and existence. Born into a Roman Catholic family, Don's personal relationship with religion was passionate. Since he was a firm Roman Catholic, religious themes are included in many of his poetry and songs. This poem is believed to have been written for his beloved wife, whom he secretly married when she was just 16. He had written this poem at the time of his departure to Europe in 1611. As history said, Dawn's marriage with his young wife was greatly disapproved by his father-in-law, and they were left without any financial help and support. So, Don lived most of his life a poor man and depended on his rich friends most of the time for survival. This lyric poem shows his deep love and devotion for his wife. This poem is written in five stanzas and can be sung like a love song. It has a rhyme scheme of A, B, A, B, C, D, D, C, and each stanza has eight lines. Here is a detailed study on the poetry. Let's go to the first stanza. Sweetest love, I do not go, for weariness of thee, nor in hope the world can show a fitter love for me. Okay, he says, my dear sweet wife, or my sweetest love, I am not going away because I am tired of you or our relationship. Or am I going to find another love? He tells her, even if the world shows me another woman, I will never fall for her because you are my one and only love. Next line. But since that I must die at last, tis best to use myself in jest. Thus, by feigned death to die. But since as human being I must die one day, let my going away be a pretend dead, so that you will not be so shocked when I die in reality. Okay, he says, let my going away to Europe be a mock imitation of dead. Stanza 2 Yesternight the sun went hence, and yet is here today. In these lines, he is using a metaphor of the sun setting to his departure and the rising of the sun to his return. Okay, he says, last night the sun went down, and yet it is here again today. He is making use of the sun as an example to show her or to tell her that he will definitely come back. Next line. He had no desire nor sense nor half so short a way. Okay, he says, the sun has no emotions on its own, so it does not have any desire or sense to return. But as for me, I do. And the distance the sun has to travel around the earth is long as compared to where I am going. So, why do you doubt of my return? Okay, he questions her. Then fear not me, but believe that I shall make speedier journeys, since I take more wings and spurs than he. Okay, he tells her, So, do not fear of my late return. I shall make a faster journey than you will ever imagine because of the wings of love and the spurs of desire that I have for you. Stanza 3 Oh, how feeble is man's power that if good fortune fall, 
cannot add another hour nor a lost hour recall. Here, John then reflects on mankind and says that we human beings are so weak and powerless. He says we have no superpower that if good fortune, that is happiness, wealth, falls, we cannot lengthen or bring back a moment or an hour of that happiness. And once an hour is gone, we cannot recall the hour or time back. Next line. But come bad chance, and we join to it our strength. But he says, when misfortune or bad things happen to us, we worry so much about it, we contemplate and think and give all our strength to bad fortune. And indirectly, we are letting the misfortune or bad chance win with our worry. So when we worry, we are giving more strength to the misfortunes in our lives. And we teach it the heart and length, itself or us to advance. But in return, we just add fuel to the fire. We just make things worse by giving misfortune a chance to increase its skill and increase the duration of sadness in us. And finally, we often have full control over our lives. So, what John then is trying to tell his wife is that she must not worry of what may come. If not, bad luck may advance or take control of them. Stanza 4 When thou sighest, thou sighest not wind, but sighest my soul away. When you worry, your worry do not win, but in return your worry destroys my soul. He tells his wife not to worry or cry, because if she does so, it destroys him. When thou weepest, unkindly kind. Here he uses an oxymoron, unkindly kind. When you cry, you are being kind to me in an unkind way. My life's blood doth decay. When she cries, the blood that gives him life is shed. So he tells her, when you cry, you are causing my soul to bleed. It cannot be that thou lovest me, as thou sayest, if in thine my life thou waste. You say you love me, but how can this be true? Because as we are one, when you are sad, you are indirectly killing me as well. So if she is sad, she wastes away his life. Thou art the best of me. In the last line of the fourth stanza, he expresses how much he loves her. He says, you are the best part of me. The last and the final stanza. Let not thy divining heart forthink me any ill. Let not your pure heart think that I will go through difficult times during my trip. He urges her not to worry. He urges her not to anticipate of the misfortunes that might befall him during his journey. Destiny may take part and may thy fears fulfill. He said, if not, destiny may take part and make her fears come true. He scares her by saying that it is just possible that the worry of bad things happening to him may come true. So, he asks her to wish him only good luck and not think of any possible harm. But think that we are but turned aside to sleep. Just imagine that we are sleeping in one bed and are facing in opposite direction. This does not mean we are separated. So even if we turn opposite direction, we are still together. They who one another keep alive, near parted be. So he concludes by saying that those who truly love each other will always live in each other's heart 
no matter where we are. We will always be together no matter the distance. So this is how he consoles her as he departs for a journey to Europe.